Hello, it is Monday and this is a new weekly reading vlog. This week is kicking off to a hell of a start, I tell ya. I am supposed to have an electrician appearing at my door at some point today. Uh, it is now ten past four and I'm not... I am not entirely sure he's going to show up. Um, the bathroom light is like dimming and then flickering and stuff and we think there might be an electrical problem with it. So the electrician that put it in is supposed to be coming to see what's wrong with it. But, so my mum came over so I had to go to work. So I was up early because Katie had to go to work at 8. So I was up at half 7. I was awake at half 7. I got up at like 8 to come downstairs and wait for the electrician. My mum then came straight after dropping the kids off at school and has sat here while I'm at work. So she's, like, she's been watching TV and having coffee and stuff like that. She's not just been like sat. She's been like, it's been fine. Uh, and I have rearranged my appointment for my COVID and flu jags. And so I've rearranged my entire day. My mum's re rearranged her entire day and he's not shown up so far. It is only four o'clock. And maybe that he's coming by. But I don't know when to like be like, yeah, he's not coming. Um, so I really hope he shows up. I have started some books. So I mentioned last week that I said I wasn't going to really talk about it because I wasn't that far in. I have started Entangled Life. I've got this beautiful spread edge edition. Look how faded. It's such a shame. Um, I have started Entangled Life. I am 11 pages in. Um, So I've started that. I've also started... After Love by Tanya Byrne. I'm also 11 pages into that. That's really weird. And I've also started Collide, which is a Kindle Unlimited romance, hockey romance. So, so far I'm really liking that. And tonight Smash has some sprints. She is doing sprints throughout the week. And I have the link if I want to join. If not, there's loads of people that want to join. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be any good company tonight or what. And I don't know how it's going to go with the Sparky. And it's just, I don't know. I want to join, but I'm not going to push myself because I don't want to half-ass it. Um, so, oh, sorry. I just twisted my knee in a really sore way. But yeah, been at work today, edited my video and it is uploading. That's the sound you can hear. I've got my um, fan on for my computer because it's heating up and sounds like it's taken off. And then tomorrow, my friends, tomorrow, tomorrow we get our new cooker. Our cooker's been broken for ages. Like we, the oven, the main oven has been broken for a while. It's been months. It's been months. And finally, in the Black Friday, like the early Black Friday deals at Curry's, we got a new cooker. And... I'm so excited for it to be delivered tomorrow so that we finally have another oven or like the oven we're supposed to have. I currently have some bolognese on in the slow cooker which is great because it means all I need to do is throw on some pasta and we have ourselves a meal for the night. So that is cooking nicely. I think it's going to need some cornstarch to thicken it up because it's quite watery but it's been stewing all day because mum's been here so it's been in slow cooker since like nine o'clock this morning so it's gonna be good it's just I don't have wine in it which is a shame because it does always taste better with wine but yeah I'm gonna go and check on that see how it's getting on and then update you later hello it is Wednesday and I don't remember if I vlogged yesterday I think I did but I don't I don't remember I don't think I vlogged much um, so I ended up DNFing Entangled Life. It just was... It just wasn't for me. It was more like a memoir than it was facts about fungi. And I, not even like a memoir. Like, he took us through, like, the time when he went along with truffle hunters and their dogs to find truffles. And while I appreciate um, him talking about the dogs, and while I also appreciate this this photo of the dog, 
Her name is Kika. Um, I don't care. I don't care that the truffle hunter was wearing um, camouflage so that other truffle hunters didn't find his spots. I don't, I don't care that um, the two dogs were trained differently and how you all feel about how they were trained. And I don't, I don't care. So yeah, that was a DNF. I got about a quarter in to it. Um, I've not read more of After Love. I'm still on page 11. And I finished Collide. I don't know if I spoke about that or not. But basically it's a high, a high school, a college hockey romance where the... So it's kind of like, it's very similar to Icebreaker. Um, if you like Icebreaker, I think you'll like Collide. And I'll put a picture here of it. Personally, I think Icebreaker was more to my taste. I would say for me it was written better than Collide. But Collide was still a good story. Just needed a little bit more input but it is also indie published so they don't have for someone who doesn't have an editor or a publishing house behind them it's really really good it just all it needed was a few tweaks and it would have been perfect so if that's my only complaint and they've done that as an indie publisher an indie like writer fantastic it is on KU um, and it is about our two main characters whose names again I cannot remember because I don't remember character names um, but the guy is the captain of the ice hockey team at the university I know they're in Boston but I don't know which university it is Dalton? I want to say Dalton anyway he's the captain of the hockey team the hockey team F up at the start of it and he takes the blame again very wildfire in a wildfire icebreaker and so he is doled out the punishment and his punishment is to be the subject of a student who is doing her I think it's a master's or something in uh what's it called sports psychology so she's doing a dissertation on athlete burnout and he is to be her subject for that and uh yeah she hates hockey so she is sports psychology major or sports psychology like masters I, I can't remember and she is like one of those kids that is like super super smart she was always super super smart and did her degree in two years and is doing like further education and further education etc and she is she hates hockey she absolutely hates ice hockey because her dad is a hockey player who basically abandoned their family or to her that he abandoned their family for his job there's they do have the conversation her and her dad later on so i'm not gonna like but yeah as far as she's concerned she was considered a mistake by her parents or by her dad and grew up feeling responsible for um him maybe not having the chance that he should have although he did you know he was a pro hockey player um and just felt neglected and unloved by him so she hates hockey hates hockey players just has this whole bias against them and she is like no i want to change it and her like advisor is like you do this or you withdraw from the course so obviously she has to do it and so it's about them having to spend time together, get to know each other, get to know the other hockey guys. Because again, like Icebreaker, the guys are just so funny. And so like the captain is like the dad and the rest of them are like kids. And it is hilarious. The characters, I cannot fault them. They're so, so funny. And again, there's a big, big push on one not slot shaming characters, be the male, female or... In between, there's no non-binary characters, but you know what I mean. There's no slut shaming, there's no um, shaming of any kind, like, in that regard. And consent is, is very heavy-handed in it. Like, they need, like, they are very, very strict about consent. And I love it. I love these new romances, these smut, smutty books that are coming out that are like, no, consent is key. And I feel like that makes sense. But I digress. But yeah, it's basically about them getting to know each other and... Um, fallen for each other really uh i really really enjoyed it i really really enjoyed it i think i cried at the end of it but that's just been me lately so yeah so yeah i finished that and really really enjoyed it and yeah it's only wednesday and honestly i just want to sleep i'm so tired i fell asleep i had a wee nap yesterday and today but it was one of those weird ones where like i didn't actually get any rest i just I felt like I sat there feeling cold with my eyes closed. So that's fun. So hopefully I'll sleep well tonight. I think 
think I'm just rambling now. I should probably wrap this up. But I just wanted to update um, for those of you that actually enjoy these. Um, I know there are... I know our friends watch this. I know. I know you guys are here. Um, thank you. But, yeah, I, I feel like I needed to, to do a bit of an update. Hello. It is Thursday. Um, I'm just getting ready to film. I don't know what's going on with my hair, but... I don't have a brush up here, so that's fun. Um... Yeah, I'm just getting ready to film. I cannot with my hair right now. What is going on? Why is it doing this? Anyway, I'm getting ready to film. Um, and Case just come home and brought me chai. So I'm very happy. Mm. I love chai. So much. Um, Yeah. I'm gonna have to go get a hairbrush to sort this out. But yeah, I'm getting ready to film a video which is a book for every year. Like, have I read a book for every year that I've been alive? Um, which Books with Chloe did, and I just had to. I just had to do it. I'm away to batch film, so I need to decide if I'm gonna get changed or if I'm gonna just batch film in one outfit. Um, knowing me, I'll probably be like, oh, I'm just gonna do it in one outfit. And then I'll get changed because it's of who I am as a person. Um, but yeah. I also received my copy of A Natural Death today uh, by Patricia Cornwell. And I'm very excited to start that. But first, filming because I need a video for tomorrow. So, yeah. Hello, happy Friday. I'm home from work. It is Friday. It is the weekend. I am excited. I'm tired. <laughs> um, so... Reading plans for today. I'm going to have to finish The Liberation by Kate Furnival, which I've not even told you I'm reading. So it's World War II historical, well, it's set in Italy after, like right after World War II has ended and like they sort of backlash from it. Um, and I've got it on audio on script and my script subscription runs out today because I cancelled it. So I need to finish it by midnight, otherwise... I don't have the audiobook anymore. But I've only got like an hour on the audiobook. Maybe an hour and a half at most left to go. So that'll go really fast. Um, progress report for anybody who wants to see my um, minor surgery. Or the, the next one on removal. Um, I'll show you. So again, anybody who can't deal with bruising, wounds, anything like that. Look away now. And I will let you know when you can look again. So one, two three look away so this is what it looks like um as you can see there's like quite a bit of bruising and the really really dark bit uh is where she obviously had to cut into me but the rest of it is just a lot of bruising but i bruise like a peach it's away now i bruise like a peach so you know that is not indicative of what it's actually like. I don't know what it would actually look like on a regular person. Um, but in other news, I have my copy of A Natural Death. I don't think I've showed you this yet. Um, by Patricia Cornwell. It's the new Scrappy novel. And these are the end pages. It's so cool. Like, it's about so this one is about it's set up in previous books so two campers are found mauled to death basically in the virginia wilderness and it literally says the victims have been savaged beyond all recognition and other evidence is terrifying and baffling including a larger than life footprint so it's like bigfoot but it's not it's not going to be like a cryptid thing it's going to be like the evidence is pointing towards Bigfoot and there's going to be like a rational explanation because these are set in the real world. They are very much like real world books. Um, so yeah, it'll just be an interesting twist. But I'm so excited to have this in my hands. I did not think I was going to be getting, like a couple of years ago, she started doing more Scarpetta novels, but she took a, a good long break and I did not think I was going to be getting any more Scarpetta novels. But here we are. She's writing again, and I'm excited. I will probably speed through this at some point, but I need to finish the liberation first. 
I'm liking it so far. Um, it is interesting. Um, this weekend I don't have many plans. Kay's off tomorrow as well, so I don't know if we're going to do something. And then on Sunday I am due to go down to Pia's because Steph and Rick are up visiting to go to the zoo. And Vicky and Bobby are going to come down. I don't know if, I don't think Tori's coming down. But Vicky and Bobby are going to come down. They're going to do a puzzle. And I'm just going to be there for moral support because I don't do puzzles. I hate puzzles so much. But yeah, it's Friday. I finished work. I'm so tired. I forgot to take painkillers to work today, so I am struggling. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go catch up with some YouTube and then get ready. Hello. It is later on, on Friday, and I have been scrolling TikTok for hours. I It's terrible. Um, but I've started A Natural Death. I showed you the, the dust jacket earlier, but I've got it in my big bestie, and I'm like 30 pages in, and it's just, you know your comfort reads that are like, not necessarily like, so like, for a comfort read, if I'm having a bad day, I would reach for like Heartstopper obviously, or Percy Jackson, or something like that. Something that's quick, something that's easy, something that's comfortable. Um, but this is a series where every time there's a new book, starting it again and, and being with the characters, it just feels like coming home. Like there's something so comforting about characters that you've been with for like 30 plus books. Let me just, give me a second. Apologies, this is book 28, I think. It's either 27 or 28. I want to say 28. But there's something so comforting about being with characters that you've kind of gotten to know through that entire time. And Patricia Cornwell writes characters so well. Like, if <laughs> if you told me that Scarpetta was real, that Lucy was real, that Marina was real, that Benson was real, I would believe you because they're so real to me. Like, they just exist somewhere in the world doing their thing and I'm just reading about their lives. It's just... I love them so much. Like, they're based on people that, that Patricia Cornwell knows. Like, if you look at the descriptions of Kay Scarpetta, she she looks like Patricia Cornwell. Like, she's... She, you know... She just is... It is. It's, it's Patricia Cornwell has, like, inserted her, her own image as Kay Scarpetta. Lucy, in my opinion, reflects the looks or aspects of the looks of Patricia Cornwell's wife, Stacey. Um, Marino is an amalgamation of all the cops that Patricia Cornwell has ever worked with. So, like, he's, like, a, a bunch of different people, but he's so well-rounded. And I can't remember who else is it. Benson. Um, I don't know who, but I think... <sighs> I think Benson's, I don't know anybody who, like, Patricia Cornwell said that Benson reminds her of anything, but he just seems so real. Like, I could see him being, like, someone off of um, Criminal Minds because that's that's his job. He was, or he's, he's, he does a different job now, but he, in this universe where Case Carpetta exists, Benton Wesley, who is one of the characters in this, started up the um, what's the unit called? The profiling unit, basically. I can't remember what it's called now. The BAU. The BAU. So, like, Behavioural Analysis Unit. That's the one. So, like, Mindhunter. Like, the guys that started that. Benson is based off of them. So, like, he starts... Like, he's an expert in forensic psychology. And he does... He's famous for doing interviews with serial killers and like he's got a way of talking to them that they will divulge information he's gone undercover and like he's an FBI agent who or he was an FBI agent who was an expert in his field when it came to behavioral analysis and profiling and like I can just see him like walking out of I sometimes see him as Hotch from Carol Mines but then like I, I don't because I don't think Hotch is as handsome as Benson is if that makes sense like Benson's like he is a handsome man like even though he's older like as you go through it like obviously the character's older so now he's like an older man like he's still like proper silver fox like handsome wears a suit like he was born to it like you know that kind of guy that's what Benson looks like and 
I just, I just feel like I know these characters. Like, I feel like these characters are like, are real people that I know. And that just to me speaks to how incredible Patricia Cornwell's writing is. Um, she was in London to do part of a tour for this, this book. And I'm so glad she went to the, I think it was the Piccadilly Waterstones and did an event there. And I would have loved to be able to go to that but one um, I can't afford to just go down to London and do things like that and two I find out I found out about it the day before or like two days before so I definitely couldn't have made my way down but she's just and everybody that like people that went there were saying she was just so lovely and so nice and so kind and articulate just basically how I like went on about um Kate Moss like Kate Moss and Patricia Cornwell are like the English and American versions of each other by the sounds of it and I would love to meet her because she's just incredible. She follows me on Twitter by the way. Patricia Cornwell follows me on Twitter. Like actually verified Patricia Cornwell, author of one of my favourite series of all time, follows me on Twitter. I cry, I not even joke, I cried when I got that notification and verified that it was real. I cried like a baby. Um... <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, she's just, she she did a BBC Breakfast interview as well. Like, I've not seen it, but I really want to see it because I just love her so much. It's, you know what people say, don't meet your heroes. They do not mean Kate Moss and Patricia Cornwell. Because those two are just amazing. But anyway, yeah, I digress, kind of. So I am 30 pages into this, like exactly 30 pages into this. And... I'm really enjoying it so far. It's she's very, very good at leading on from the previous book. So like the consequences of the previous book always come through into the book after. Even things like there's things that happened in the very early books that the consequences stay with the characters throughout. And I think that's a an incredible feat of her writing and her research and her dedication to her series because she started, I, I've done a, a thing where it was like a book for every year that I've been alive, thanks to Claire Reed's books, inspired me to do that. And uh, Postmortem, which is the first ever K. Scarpetta book, was written or published in 1990. And A Natural Death came out yesterday, the 23rd of November, 2023. So she has been writing these books for longer than I've been alive and is continuing to write these books and is still doing wonders for the cat like she's still continuing through lines like there are, oh, I just like it's not it's I I love it the way she writes like you get some authors who you read a book and then you read the sequel and you'll be like yeah but you're just ignoring what's happened in the first book. I found that with T.L. Hutchu um, when I read The Library of the Dead and then the Our Lady of Mysterious Ailments. I was, it was like the first book never happened. I was like, whoa, what's happened? Like what? Like there's a whole big section missing. Like you've just abandoned your storyline. What's happening? And I'm hoping that it all ties together in the third book, which is out, but it's not in paperback, so I don't have it yet. I'm hoping it all ties together and I'm just stupid. Um, and I'll reread them and hopefully it's just that I've missed something. But for me, Patricia Cornwell just has this unbelievable way of continuing. Like, you, you could quite easily believe these people are real. Um, these characters are real. It's just... So yeah, I'm really happy. I'm really enjoying that. I was on the phone to my mum earlier. Um, and she was like, well, I'm going to let you get back to whatever you were doing. I was like, oh, I'm just reading. And she was like, you're new Scarpetta book. And I was like, yeah. Because <laughs> she knows me so well. My mum is the reason I have my collection of Patricia Cornwell books and the reason that I will never, I, I don't think, ever get rid of, well, partially the reason I'll never get rid of my collection. So, again, because they've been published since 1990, there are so many editions. Like, so, so many editions of these books. And you cannot get a single, you, you can't get a single run of these books. They're all different editions. Um, there are chunks where you can get like similar, like they did mass market paperbacks, um, for the first for like the first few, and then stopped in them to do standard size paperbacks, and then stopped in them to do the hardbacks, and then 
there's the paperbacks of the hardbacks and but there's different hardbacks and it's it's all over the place and my collection reflects that and my collection started when a friend loaned me the book of the dead which by the way is like it's like the third or the fifth i can't remember but it's the third or the fifth book in this entire series and is mentioned within the first 30 pages of this um because the book of the dead is what she calls her sign-in book i suppose so in the morgue they have this book at the front desk and that logs every person who comes in and out of the morgue and this I, like i say this has carried through from the third or the fifth book again i cannot remember i think it's the fifth book um i've not like i've got a list of the books right in front of me book of the dead is oh god it's much much older than that we're at one two Fifteenth. It's the fifteenth book. So <laughs> Book of the Dead is the fifteenth book. Uh, fifteen yeah, fifteenth book. But it's now continued on to like the twenty odd book. Like it's a thing through the entire series. And I've totally gotten off track. But yeah, I my mum then so my my friend gave me their book and I read it and I loved it and this was back in high school and then I started collecting the books in order to read them in order because I wanted to, to go from the start and because they're much harder to get a hold of or not hard to get a hold of but like there's like 20 odd books even before then it was like like I say it was you know there's a lot of books to try and get anytime my mum was in like a charity shop or something she would if she saw one of the books that I didn't have she would pick it up so it became like a tradition that she would look in charity shops to find the British Cornwall books and so my collection is mostly built up of books that my mum has found in various random <laughs> charity shops and like fairs and car boot sales and just like random random places that my mum has found the series and it means the absolute world to me that she dedicated her time to finding me the series like it means so much more than getting like a just paying for it all and like this goes back to like pre-amazon times like this this is i'm talking from like the time i was in like early high school because that friend i haven't we kind of we kind of drifted apart when i was like 16 so that's like 15 years ago is when we drifted apart so it was before that that she gave me the book and I know you're probably thinking, why is your mum letting you read books like that at that age? But, like, I was watching CSI and Criminal Minds and all that sort of stuff. Like, forensics was my interest when I was younger. Like, I studied it in university. Like, it was my thing. So, me reading things like that, it's not, they're not overly graphic. They're very scientific. They're very straightforward, straight to the point. Um, they're not grotesque for no reason. They are very much, like, um, so very much science-based and so very much, like, blunt books that you know my uh, my mum always said I went from being like a teenager to an adult or like a toddler to an adult I didn't do the teenage phase which I don't know what that says about me and there's probably something but I've never had I've never um I don't know I don't know where I'm going with this but yeah mum collected the books for me and I once I had like the set um like books in a row I started reading them and I've never looked back I this is the only crime or thriller-esque thing that I will read because it follows I think I've said this again like previous as well this follows the medical examiner so Case Carpetta is a medical examiner and she's the chief medical examiner at the start of the books in Virginia and it's a hard point of view most of the time with the occasional like chapter from like you get like the murderer's point of view and but it's it's all from her point of view and the science is solid. Patricia Carmel is a forensic scientist trained. She does meticulous and I mean meticulous research on every aspect of her books. Like if she wants to know something that's not in her speciality, she will speak to somebody whose speciality that is and she will run everything by them to make sure that she is getting the science right. If she so one of our things, port mortuary is based in a port, obviously like port mortuary, um, 
and Kay Scarpetta has to go diving. Patricia Cromwell went and got her diving licence. The dog that is in this, she owns one of those dogs. She learned to fly a helicopter so that she could talk about how to fly a helicopter in this. Like, just the feeling of like being in the air and feeling the pedals and pulling on. She doesn't like explain to you how to read how to fly a helicopter, but she brings the atmosphere with her knowledge. And that's one of the things I think is just uh, unbelievable about her. But yeah, I'm going to stop this because, uh, yeah, I'm going to get back to reading. Hello. It is Saturday evening, technically Sunday morning. Um, and I've just finished A Natural Death by Patricia Cornwell. Patricia Cornwell, can't say her name. Really difficult for some reason. Um, but yeah, I have just finished this. This was such a good instalment. It's not, I think she's, I don't know what's happened with her writing style. I don't know if it's like a choice, but it's really, it's simplified and slowed down. So it's not like as dense. So like that book, the 418 pages, is a, like normally I'd expect her books to be around the four to 500 page mark and be quite dense and have a lot in them. Whereas it seems to be quite spread out now. I don't know if that's because she's trying to do longer arcs or if the feedback she's been getting is that for people who don't understand the science, it's a bit trickier for them to get into it. So like for me, when she's just like blazing through like the use of the scanning electron microscope and things like that, I'm just like, yep, I know exactly how that works. And I'm not being sarcastic. I literally know how they work because I, again, studied forensic science at university. So, um... All of the science in Patricia Cornwell's books, I understand. Um, not to like obviously like an expert, like, but like I understand enough to be able to read the books and not have to think about it. Um, but I think she's she's explaining a lot more now, and I think that might be feedback that people are finding it a bit more dense and a bit harder to get to, like less accessible, which is fair. Like that's totally fair. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I've noticed about the newer books is that they are sort of slowing down um, and it's not quite as like intense, it's not as thrillery. But this whole time, like the whole time, the reason I, ha I read this book in like one sitting is because the entire time I was like terrified for the characters. I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Like, it was just like that thing where it was just like gripped me. Um... And I was like, oh god, oh god, oh god. And, you know, so yeah. Great installment. I love, really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, now we need to go to bed because I am due, due to go down to Pierce tomorrow. Um, because, like I say, Steph and Rick are coming up. Vicky and Bobby are going to be there. I don't know if Tori's going to be there. I can't remember. I don't think so. But yeah, so that'll be fun tomorrow. Oh, what do I read now? I should probably finish or continue After Love because I'm still only 11 pages into it. So, yeah. I'm going to go to bed because I am really tired. So I'm going to take a, a nap and then fire see me If you get that reference. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm going to bed. Hello. I'm in the car. I'm on my way to Pia's. And um, I just better put my badge up. <laughs> um, uh, I'm on my way to Pia's. But of course it's me. So first. I have to get my chai from Costa. You can't see that properly. Um, there's a lot of people about it. So I'm not trying to vlog like in public. But yeah. I'm at my local Costa. Um, to get some chai. And then I will be scooting on down to Pia's house. I'm very excited. Hello it's Monday. Um. Yes, I didn't vlog anything at Pia's yesterday because I forgot because I was too busy enjoying myself. Um, but yeah, we had Vicky, uh, Bobby, Steph, Rick and Pia um, and we ended up doing a puzzle. Yes, I helped with the puzzle, but I was mainly like separating pieces into their colours. And then we had some wagas and then we just chatted for a while. It was just really nice. I really enjoyed myself. But um, as you can hear, my voice is a bit short. My throat was so sore last night from laughing. Like, I ended up choking from laughing so much. Um, mostly at Vicky. Like, me and Vicky just set each other off. It's so funny. Yeah, I really enjoyed myself. 
and it was so nice to get to see Rick and Steph again. Um, but yeah, I'm just coming into end of vlog here so I can start my new one. I did not read anything else. I've not read any more after love. I, and there's only a few days left in the month now that I need to get reading. So wish me luck. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. If you want to leave an emoji but you don't want to type a comment, you leave me a little car emoji because I drove down to Pia's and back. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.